Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dan Geesing. Welcome to episode 98 of the Dan Geesing podcast. Super excited to be here today. Just saying the words 98. It's been a long time, whether you're dialing in from Skokie, Illinois, Ireland, Honolulu, Albuquerque, anywhere in between. Maybe you're in Evanston, Illinois. Maybe you're in Moxie, Kansas. 98 episodes, super excited to dial in today, got a lot of stuff going on, and uh, before we do that, I, I got a small ask, uh, if you haven't rated the podcast on iTunes, I don't think I've ever asked for it on the front end, I just looked at it, we have 137 reviews, it's been like, uh, I think like three, four months since the review, so I'm like, oh, that means I haven't asked, so if, if you're enjoying it, I encourage you to uh, leave a review on iTunes, whatever you see fit, uh, it helps out the show, and I appreciate it. With that being said, let's jump right into... Uh, an update of what's been going on. You know, we're coming hot off uh, a week of doing the show kind of on a new schedule. And the schedule was all developed because of essentially I blew up my schedule uh, just to, to reformat it a little bit so I could have uh, so I could do it in a way that it was sustainable long term. And it was kind of checking all the boxes. So it went pretty good. Uh, I learned a, learned a bunch along the way. I, I set the, the, the show to start about 10 a.m., so about an hour earlier. The entire week was very important to me to start the show exactly at 10 a.m. So typically what I would do, it, you know, in the past, you know, say I'd say probably during the past couple months, I would start the live stream at like, you know, if it was starting at 11, I started at 10.55 and put like a 10 or 12 minute timer on there. So the show wouldn't really start until like 10 after 11. Uh, but what I've really been focused on is the using the start time as the actual start time. So the past week I'd go live like 9.45, 9.50, put the timer on and actually start the show at 10. So I think we're like five out of four out of five days, five out of six days. The other one I missed by like a minute or two. Uh, so that's just something really important to me that I want to continue to do. Uh, but it was good. You know, it uh, kind of checked all the boxes. I felt like I was doing everything that needed to be done both for the show and for the not only for the YouTube channel and for work, but also in, in my you know personal life, you know, husband, dad duties, getting stuff done around the house. It just was good. And, and so even with that, I was supposed to take Thursday off and, and I Thursday off, no streaming. I, I still ended up doing that. But even with that, you know, the schedule, I just feel better. Right? And really the biggest change is, is getting up earlier. And, and, you know, during the week, I try to get about 5.30, run, and then uh, record some videos before everyone wakes up in the house, take some time, uh, you know, about an hour or so, eat breakfast with everyone, play a little bit, and then go to the office and, and kind of start the day. That's been working out really well. And uh, it was funny because today I'm recording this on a Sunday. It was funny. And I wake up a little bit later on the weekends, but I woke up a minute before, like I was fully awake a minute before my alarm went off this morning. And I was like laughing. I'm like, how, how is that even possible? Like, so I, I was sat up and my alarm wasn't going off. And then a minute later, it's just, it's just weird. And I bet that will continue to happen. I have no explanation for it, but I think it's just a matter of repetition and kind of getting up early and, and kind of completing that feedback loop of, you know, it being a good thing and understanding that now it's not easy to always get up early, but it's, it's worked out well. And I continue to, I like to continue to press. It's actually worked out well enough where I've been able to even squeeze a, a second series, the actually third series on the YouTube channel uh, with Neon Abyss, which kind of leads us into our next segment is uh tyler the producer said hey dan there's this game coming out called neon abyss it looks like pr a pretty good fit you should give it a shot so uh i i don't know if i had a code or if i requested one and i already had it but anyways i got a code early um and i got the code on july 10th or the i, I got the code early and there was an embargo for the content on July 10th, meaning that you can record whatever you want. You, you just can't release anything till July 10th. So I recorded a first look at video. I really, really liked it and sat on it until July 10th. I released it. And then I think July 10th was a, was it a Friday? Whatever it was, I, it was a Friday. I changed the Twitch schedule around because Friday we normally play Tarkov in 51 games. I'm like, let's bring it to Twitch because I, I really like it, but let's see if, if people enjoy watching it. So 
it went really good. And Neon Abyss is like a, it's like a mix between Gungeon and Rogue Legacy, but it's really, really, really well done. There's a lot of detail, a lot of attention paid to details. So it's a really, really fun experience. And, and it went over on Twitch. So it's good. And I feel like this is the first time in a while where it's like a new game that's come out. That's kind of out of left field that you're not, you know, just kind of came out of nowhere. And it's just, it's really good. And it's a lot of the, the skills from Spelunky translate over. Not, not all, but it's, it's good. And it fits in that, that, that mold of a game that I'm fired up to play. And, and I think people really enjoy watching it. So I've, I've made it a mini series this week. So now we, every day on the YouTube channel, we have Spelunky, Neon Abyss and Golden Goblet. So that's a lot. And it's almost like I'm taking, if I rewind three weeks, I'm like, man, that's, you know, that's redlining, but as long as my schedule continues to go the same way, which I don't know why it wouldn't of, uh, you know, getting up early, it's, I can knock it all out and still have time to, you know, do everything that needs to be done. So it's good. So, so it's been, so that was a nice little change up The The thing I learned from that though, is Neon Abyss, Abyss went really well. And just for context, numbers wise, I think it peaked at like a thousand or 1200 people watching it, which is really, really good for the channel. Like tremendous, like top eats and, um, and it overran. So the, 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 there's a difference between the, the Twitch schedule when we, we, when we stream what day and what time and what I call the platter, the platter is what happens on the show that day. And the platter for the day was play two hours of neon abyss, uh, two hours of 51 games, world record, and then open packs. Well, I think we plan on playing neon abyss for like four hours. And people are like, oh, I guess 51 games are gone. I'm like, eh, maybe. And then I, you know, some people, and rightly so, that were watching live saying, hey, you know, that's not what you said you were going to do in the show. Um, and everyone's really cool about it. But to me, I don't take that lightly. Because back in the day, I remember doing that a lot, saying we're going to play something and then it changed. And, and it's just not the, the vibe I want to get off on the channel. If, if people expect to see two games or expect to see whatever we put on the platter, and that platter may change. Um, you know, day to day, but if it's set for the day, I don't want to deviate from that, regardless of how well a game is going or how, how much fun we're having. That's one of the things, the areas of improvement I need to work on. So I end up running a much, much longer show on Friday than was scheduled, which is fine. I mean, I don't, it's not something I want to get in the habit of, but cause I didn't really, I didn't want to disappoint anyone that wanted to see 51 games. So, so that went really well. And you know, but also something to learn from. Uh, another thing that, uh, you know, that's that's going on this week, and, and I found out, you know, a couple of days ago, is that, so right now the team is myself, Tyler, the producer, and Zane, the editor. And without getting into a ton of details, um, you know, we're losing an editor. And it's good. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole, I'd probably say when it gets closer, I'll probably do you know talk more about that and and why i'm i'm okay with that and, and which may be contradictory but and why i'm actually happy for that but that'll be for another podcast but basically where i'm at now is is now i'm looking for a new video editor and a video editor that can do a lot of things right and wear multiple hats and and i think that's just the the nature of the team is that everyone on the team wears different hats and and it's got to develop and work on different skills and and my take on it is kind of like um and what people do for the team is, is that if they're doing the same thing they were a year ago, exactly, then they're not growing. Right. And so to me, you know, I think the responsibilities that are on the team, they like grow and change and, you know, they get to work on different skills and, and, you know, when I ask for crazy things and stuff like that, but, um, basically I'm, I'm now kind of semi starting over from square one with a new video editor. So I put something out there on Twitter and in the discord and I think on Instagram as well. And I got, I got some really good submissions. And one of the things that's really the two most important things to me are one that the, the individual can work well in a, in a team and that I can, you know, I, I will look forward to working with them. Um, like I would much rather and work with someone less talented quote unquote, less talented, or maybe not have the skills developed yet, but it's easy to work with eager can take input and is willing to, you know, learn and, and and learn new skills than someone who's really talented but hard to work with. It's a no-brainer for me. Um, so I think, um, so I got some really, really talented. All I did was say, hey, I didn't ask for anything. 
I, I just said I didn't ask for anyone to make anything. I'm just like, hey, just send me your reel if you're interested. The the two so the criteria one is they're going to work well on the team, and two is um, that they're familiar with the content in the community. So of what we produce, the 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 angle of things we do, the tone, uh, even down to the games. And so a bunch of people sent some stuff in a lot, some names I recognized. And there's a couple people that I didn't ask for, but they're they're going well above and beyond kind of the call of what I asked for. And so I'm I'm going to take this week to kind of go through everything, sift everything, line up a few interviews, and I'll have both Zane and Tyler in there. Um, you know, because the, the cool thing about so with Zane leaving, it's it's not like oh he's just vanishing, right? It's going to be like a passing of the torch and a transition period. Um, so, but I but I want their input, right? Because they know what it's like to work with me and, you know, go through that whole process. So I think they'll, they have insight that I don't have and, and they'll know things to look for. And, and the other thing too, is that, um, you know, they're going to want, they're going to have to work together. So, so it's something I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, and, but also it's, I'd say it's like, a, I don't say a short term setback because I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm happy for Zane and, Really, and and I think it's it's a best move for for everyone for him and and you know I, I of course do I still want him on the team yeah of course but you know I understand things change and life changes um, so it's I was, it's not a short term setback but it definitely I got to divert some attention to that area that takes away from other areas but that's fine it's just you know it's just part of the game and and um, you know so that's gonna be something that's going on in the next week or so and it, it'll be interesting to kind of go through the process because right now the t- the way the team's set up i don't want to say it's on autopilot but just everyone knows what to do and the conversations we have are i want to say super high level but it's not uh you know everyone all the logistics of everything who has access to the drop boxes the youtube channels how we do stuff where we put stuff all that stuff is is things that need to be taught but right now they're just all it's all normal it's all it's all been taught. So there's an element of that. I know there's going to be some like bumps and bruises whenever we bring the new person or persons on. And, uh, but I'm excited to it. I think it also with that, there's going to be a lot of good things. There'll be a different creative slant. You'll maybe see some different stuff being produced because it's going to be done by a different person. And, and so I, I always think change in that regard is good. And, and, but for me, it's always whenever I, Whenever someone leaves or if someone decides to join the team, it's always got to be best for both people, right? It's not, it can't just be good for me. It's got to be best for both people. And, and, um, you know, if it ever becomes not that situation or something changes, then I'm 100% okay with that, you know, and could be on both sides. And that's just how I treat things. And, and so to me, it's like an investment in, like I'm fully invested in the success of that person and I want to see the person that works on the team grow and, and pursue what they want to pursue. And whether it is, you know, always working on the team or not, like I want to be supportive of that. Cause that's the only way stuff works. The only way teams work is if everyone is happy and they're, they're moving towards what they want to move towards. And, you know, so that's just how I operate it. And so that's why also I'm not, you know, and I feel like I've learned this in the past couple of years. I'm not willy nilly about who I'm going to bring out. I'm not in a huge rush. Like I, you know, it's not a frantic, you know, hiring process. Um, I just want to make sure that we get the right person or persons on the team to, to feel the, fill the role uh, of Zane. Cause Zane, you know, does a lot, but I, I think I'll probably, as we get closer to the transition period, you know, I'll probably talk more about the, the duties of that. But basically what I'm looking for is, like a creative uh, video individual that can, you know, can create some content based on, you know, or edit content based on stuff we already create and also be able to manage a YouTube channel. Uh, that's another huge part of it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll share the process of how the, you know, the hiring process goes and and, you know, I won't reveal any information about who's being interviewed or stuff like that. But I always find it interesting because I always learn something new every time I speak to someone, especially in a hiring or not firing situation, but a hiring situation or interview situation. You just, you know, you just see how it goes and we'll kind of take it from there and and uh, do the best we can. 
So outside of that, the other interesting thing, another first time thing that happened is I did a uh, Instagram deal for the first time. So it's the first time I've ever done a sponsored social media post on Instagram. And it's funny because it's been in the works for a little bit, but it also, it, knowing the fact that I was doing that, it made me focus a more attention on providing value on Instagram or at least posting stuff stuff on Instagram and the language of Instagram where I haven't really always been consistent um so I did a, a sponsored post on there it was a deal with Verizon uh for a local you know it's like a Detroit deal um tar you know the, the the deal was targeted at uh people in Michigan and Detroit and it went really well and, and I was there was a little hesitation to take the deal only because I'd never done an Instagram deal before. And I don't do a ton of content there, but at the same time, it was for a product that I would use a product that, you know, the way the deal was set up made sense. And, and so I did it and, and I'm, I made it very clear both before and after the advertisement or the sponsor post that it was sponsored, but I also was, was very clear that, you know, I, I, I take that so serious, right? Like, there's a lot of deals that we pass and you'll hear me talk about this all the time. A lot of deals that I pass on just because, you know, it may pay good, but it's, I don't want to say it's offensive to the community, but it's like, it doesn't, it's not something I would use. It's not something I would, I would, a product I would use or something. I don't want to say endorse because that's not the right word, but something that I wouldn't even be interested in. Um, so I pass on a lot of that stuff and really all of it because I feel you know, no judgment to any, how anyone runs their Instagram or anything like that. But for me, it's just, if I'm going to do something sponsored, I want to make sure that it's, <clears throat> it's something that fits. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, someone that chooses to follow, whether on Instagram or Twitch or whatever would provide some value or entertainment to them and not just a payday for me. And so I was, I was really, I don't want to say surprised, but it was night, the response that I got from the Instagram post and it's really, was a lot more work than I thought. And, it, and I say that tongue in cheek, cause it's not that much work, but it was a Instagram like picture, you know, so like a main feed post and then six Instagram stories. And that took a little bit more sauce than I thought, because, you know, the Instagram post I had in my head, but an Instagram story, I, you know, it took some thought because I didn't want to do it in a super salesy way. I wanted to do it in a unique way to me. And, and one of the, the pitches or one of the part of the deals with the Verizon thing was you got Disney plus free for three months. So I'm like, okay, how can I mention this in a way that's true to me? I'm like, well, I'm, I like Disney plus because it has a Mandalorian. So I, you know, pulled up the Mandalorian as like a desktop image and, and did something with that. So I, I just, I wanted to make it like me, not the company speaking, you know, and, but still, you know, when you take a deal, you still gotta, there's certain things you don't have to say, but certain messaging that, you know, is important to the sponsor. So I went really well and, you know, I had a lot of conversations, um, you know, with the, the person that was dealing uh, with the, the promotion and, and just kind of picking that individual's brain about, Hey, look, like, how does this stuff happen? What's the activation? And just kind of learning that process, which typically would have all been done prior by the management team that, you know, that I was with. Uh, but now it's like, I don't have that. So I got to figure it out. And you know, that all takes time, but I, I think it's probably good that I learned that stuff anyways. Um, you know, especially moving forward in the future. So Outside of that, it's been, it's been a really good week. I think this is probably the first time in the history of the podcast that I feel, I don't want to say that we have YouTube figured out, but like that I feel not content with YouTube, but I feel very, very strongly and very, very positively about the direction of how things are going on the main YouTube channel. I just feel really good about the Spelunky series, the, the viewership and the the, you know, I think the excitement and the entertainment is there for the Spelunky series. I think, you know, there's a very unique thing going on with, with the Golden Goblet series with Trackmania. I didn't even talk about that. The videos are getting like, you know, roughly eight to 10,000 views per video, which is insane and, and not any, it's like five, six X what a normal, really good video would do. Uh, so that's going really well. And then the Neon Abyss series. So it's, I always feel like the battle is with YouTube. Like I have a really good, pretty good feel on Twitch, but YouTube is, this is probably the best I've ever felt. We, we hit an 83,000 subscriber milestone. So I did a special video for that. We're, we're approaching 84,000. We'll do another special video for that. So it's, everything's just going really well. And, and, 
and I'm trying to find something. I'm like doing a quick audit in my head of something that's not going really well. And really what it all, why it feels like everything's going really well, I think an over, overarching theme is that because um, it's, uh, you know, my schedule's in line. It's, I feel good about the schedule. I feel good about how I'm spending my time. And and uh, so it's all good eats. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's podcast. Uh, if you haven't left a review on iTunes and you listen on iTunes, it would mean a lot to me. Uh, I think we have like 142, 137. Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed it and have a great week. And I will see you guys next Monday.